So Keith, we're talking about Embiid. You're there every day. You're seeing him every day. Where is he now in terms of conditioning and his ability to, you know, go uh, give you 40 plus minutes uh, throughout a series? You know, it's it's tough because I don't think he, he, he reached that that level yet. He was trying to. He was trending in that level. And then all of a sudden, you know, as Brenda said, you know, he, he tweaked his knee. And then all of a sudden he didn't play in the in the other game. Now, now here's the thing about Embiid. It's like as far as where is he? You know, I would have to say that he took a step back. You know, I thought that he was like 90 something percent, 95. He was getting back to just being in condition. But, you know, as of the last game, when you saw the Miami, he didn't have the mobility that he had before. Um, it, it seemed like he didn't have the lift on the shot. Um, I don't know if it was mental or not, like if he was fearful of, uh, you know, in re-injuring the knee. But I didn't see the same aggressiveness, aggressiveness that I saw the, in the previous games before before the injury, before the tweak. So I would have to say Embiid's around 80 percent, you know what I mean? But, I mean, that's good, I guess, but not for a playoff game, in, in my opinion. Maybe I'm making too much of it, Keith, but even with that bad game that he had most of the game against Miami, he still came up really big late. Um, I think he scored or assisted on 10 points late in the fourth that just swung the game. So, you know, regardless, 80 percent, 75 percent, still, you know, can, can come up in a big moment for Philadelphia. And I think obviously the series starts there and swings there. And Brendan, if you are drawing up ways to defend, you're scheming ways to defend Joel Embiid, you've got the Knicks centers at your disposal. How would you approach it? To be honest with you, and, and many moons ago when I coached in Memphis, which goes back like 18 years, um, there were teams that we played that had very good passing big men. And whether they were at the elbow or they were at the top of the key, which are two places that Embiid usually is, we jammed all passers. And being that MB might not have a lot of mobility if he kind of looks like he did against Miami, I would get in his face and make him put the ball down on the floor because I don't think he can do a lot of that. And I would go that way on him rather than play off him or, or come up with different schemes of five-man situations. I would just say to Hartenstein, whenever he's in the game, you're in the game. You see him go to the bench, you come to the bench. He comes to the table, you go to the table. And you just face guard him and cross face, make him turn, make him turn one shoulder so one half of the floor is taken away. He's such a great dribble handoff guy because he's big and he has a knack for passing. So he and Maxie and other guys can be really good in two-man games. But I would just pressure him and say, hey, you got to dribble the ball to beat us. And he could do that last Friday night against Orlando. He was doing everything against Orlando last Friday night. But now the mobility isn't there. Like, make them put it down. Brendan, you've also mentioned um, in the, the write-ups on SNY.TV that if Embiid is out, on the, out away from the rim, draws the Knicks big man out, that could, that's not the natural uh, positioning the Knicks like to play on defense. How do they, how do they defend in that position with a Hardenstein or a Robinson pulled out? Well, you have two distinctive options. Number one, do what I just said. Because if you press up on him and you make all passes hard and he might only have a pass to either wing, that's going to somewhat diffuse some of their offensive sets that they run. The other thing you can do is what the Knicks did to Sabonis the last two times they played Sacramento late in the season. And they played off him and they gapped everything and they went at, you know under everything so that would be like DiVincenzo and Hart going under on some of their different perimeter guys and then when the guy slid through the gap then the big did have the ability to go and close back up again after the dribble handoff maybe didn't happen so the Knicks have done a little bit of both and Tom has done a lot of really good individual game plans I'd say since the all-star break so you know we're gonna find out in the first quarter what it's all about because Embiid has generally been up top. He's generally been the trailer. They do put him in the post a handful of times a game, but he's generally out there. 